Welcome back to Mental Health Matters. And this week, as promised, we're going to do a show on Ken Daly's Big Four. So he's going to describe what that is. And I'm so glad you're listening today to make a difference in your life today. We're here to inspire you, help things to move along, not to give you answers. You're the one with your own answers. We're just here to get things, juices flowing a little bit. So, you're listening to Mental Health Matters with Dr. Scott Terry, and if you, on KRUU 100.1 on your FM dial, and if you're wanting more information about some of the past shows, they're archived at KRUUFM.com. Um, they're also on our YouTube channel. What is that, Danielle? That's the Ardent Center uh, YouTube no, channel. No, Ardent Counseling Center. Ardent Counseling Center, and that's A-R-D-E-N-T. And they're also on the Arden Counseling website, which is ArdenCenter.com. So www.ArdenCenter.com. Sorry to confuse everybody. And you could always email us. Where, how can they get email us? They, I guess they could just email me directly, can't they, if they have questions or show ideas or something like that? Yeah, absolutely. And that's Scott at ArdenCenter.com. And how will you spell Arden again? A-R-D-E-N-T. Okay. All right. So... Um, with us, Danielle is co-hosting, and Ken Daly, our favorite guest. Ken, um, tell us about yourself and the big four. Well, uh, I've been involved with exercise and sports science and transferred about 10, 12 years ago. started moving really into the wellness area in a fairly substantial way, getting involved at the state and uh, national level. Wellness, I think, is the driving force in my life right now, and uh, part of that is I teach a course at the university. What, what does wellness mean? Let's start with basics, because people, I think, often dismiss, especially in school, oh, sports, or yeah, maybe that's for rah-rah, but it doesn't really mean something, or exercise are for those people. It's not for me. I don't like it. It hurts. It's boring. Or they think, you know, people who teach exercise or sports uh, you know um they don't really think of it as a real course they think of it as a blow-off thing and it really doesn't matter why is this important well when you look at wellness in in the word well deep you know i think of well i think of deep and when and health has a tendency to be absence of disease Wellness is all in this positive. It's like in in psychology, you know, we st- go Freud. You know, we got problems. It's all mm. about problems, problems, problems. You know, Adler and company when they started, you know, all of a sudden th- th- it was well something better. Can you grow? Can you mm. go to someplace mm. else? Uh, the same thing with the fitness movement was always a lack. You are not fit. You are not healthy. Yes. You are not. That was a negation of, of health. Whereas wellness is move, it's in the continuum, but it's moving over into that positivity. How does one grow? Wellness and growth, I think, are synonymous here. Wow. I, I love that. Oh, wow. Because I think that's where all of us get trapped in these uh, naive notions of what this all means and getting how important it is. One of the things I, I really love, if, if you're a meditator, non-meditator, whatever, one of the things I think I really love about this place, Maharishi University of Management, and again, I am not here endorsing anything. What I'm doing is I'm saying, let's pick what works in all arenas and stop with this us versus them and them, uh, that worked but doesn't work. Okay, one of the things I really liked is this notion of an expansion of consciousness. Who am I, right? It's not just what I'm stuffing into my head, but how do I expand who I am, right? Because if I don't get that identity, that shift in who I am, then what does it matter what I'm learning, right? Doctors have one of the highest alcoholism rates, Right? Dr- drug use. Drug use, right? Yeah. Nurses, I know, have a huge smoking, right? I mean, this, it's crazy. Like, the people that are supposed to be healthy are focused so much on the knowledge, but not who they are and being proponents of what they're supposed to be doing. And it's the same with us. We become our own hypocrites, our own worst enemy. We tell our kids, do something that we're, in fact, doing. Don't smoke, child, but I'm going to. Or, you know, treat people right, but... I treat my partner wrong, you know, and it's, and I think it misses the point. And so I think this notion that you talk about wellness of not a lack, 
but of a strength, a power, is so essential to learn. I mean, and something you really need to retrain yourself and learn. Well, not only do you have to retrain yourself and learn it, th- you have to look at the components of it. Because so often when we think of wellness, we come back to health issues. Well, wellness can also be financial wellness. Oh, it can also yeah, be yeah. social wellness. Yes. It can be interpersonal wellness. Wellness, actually, I th- the way that it's b- currently being used in the industry is a much more encompassing term. It's, it's taking all fields of human endeavor and saying, on that field, what is the expansive quality? What is the thing that is most nurturing? So that if you have financial wellness... Uh, Mm. You know, are you looking for your future? Are you spending now when you should be spending because it's important to you uh, uh, to not get into a poverty mentality? Uh, You know, Mm. because you can get, oh, I have to have my future is what I have to worry about. Well, yes, but if you get to be miserly now, it has really ramifications for your whole life. Right. Or if I get trapped in the opposite that flip coin, I can never spend anything on myself. Right. Right? You know, then, then, you know, I still need to live. How do I live productively? How do I take advantage of this? And how do you embrace? This yes. is an embracing of life rather than a, a shying away from or a hiding from. How to be robust uh, in, in a life. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, because I think that's where our power is. Ab- Again, and so this notion I was talking about the, um, with the school um, where, and maybe I, I don't know if I said this in a way that you would talk about, Ken, but this expansion of consciousness, this expansion of who I am, and then utilizing, not being a hypocrite, doing something with it. So it's the same kind of notion. We're going to talk about these big four in a second. But it's like, I am exercising. But I'm not just exercising for the sake of exercising or a brain chemistry shift, which is you know, one of the biggest things I could do with anybody who's got any disorder, ex- uh, you know, depression, anxiety, stress in any part, even in a relationship issue, the huge stress. How do I come back to myself and reassume control and power back with me and doing something for me so then I could then be a teammate with my partner, right? But also by doing exercise, I just don't get that brain chemistry chip, for example. I am expanding this notion of I'm this greater awareness of my body. It's not just my brain and my mind, but my body. Oh, what does my feet feel like? How's my breathing? What's my positioning as I'm running? Having this awareness, this greater sensitivity to who I am and being connected. That well, it's it's like think of it as a chair. Your life is a chair. You pull one ru- one leg in the chair, the other three come along, yeah. and in phys- and that's what you're describing here with physical activity as one of these legs, these fundamentals. Uh, you give it a little tweak, and the other ones get tweaked also. Exactly. Now that it doesn't mean that that's not the one that's getting the the movement. Absolutely, it's getting the the the, the major pull, but the rest have to come along. They come along for the ride, and they get better in, in the process. So by exercising, it's not just changing my biology, and I feel better, and I'm going to live longer, and I'm going to be healthier, okay? But it's also, um, and by the way, you'll also be smarter because you'll have more gray matter um, and more connections, right. neural connections, but we could talk about that till some other day. But it's also, I am connected. My mind and body are now connected. But I'm also now choosing, which gets into purpose in life, which we're going to talk about in a second as well. I'm now choosing to take control over my life today in a very concrete, manifest way. I am choosing to take control over my life. And because I'm choosing to take control over my life means that then I can choose to take control and change these habits I feel trapped in, whatever that is. Or maybe I'm doing great and I'm ready to take myself to the next level. It gets back to I now have a purpose in life and I can make a difference with myself. Thus, I can make a difference with others, with my relationships or with what I, why I'm alive. Well, it comes back to this body-mind. It, it's not that there is a mind and a body. There is no difference between body and mind. Uh, it's a continuum. I, I, people talk about mind-body. I like to use reverse it and say body mind now i'm a physical kind of guy yeah, yeah, but yeah. i i say come back to the physical because that's very approachable you know it's i can 
it's an interesting thing. You can change uh, a mental attitude. Very difficult to change the mind on, on one level. It's very easy to change the body. But the reversibility, if I change my mind, the way that my mind works, then it's very permanent. It, it, it's got, it has a lot of residual quality. With the body, it's interesting. It's very easy to change it, but it also doesn't change permanently. You have to stay at it. So there's, this, there's a lot more flux in the body. A lot less flux in the mind. But most people say, well, my mind jumps around. Well, but yet when you change the mind then those are very deep changes in how you see the world uh, and how the world exists. In the body, you make a little tweak, you get a little healthier, a little bit more ability to exercise. That reversibility is very high also, so you have to stay at it. So there's a continuum between body-mind, uh, and then there's a lot of flux in between those two. Yeah, I'm reminded of uh, just even changing your posture and how affecting your body can change your quality of experience from how, what is my experience when my shoulders are shrugged in to when I change my posture, do I feel more empowered and how influential the body can be on the state of your experience. Well, I, yeah, it, it, just right now you're sitting at home. I'm serious. Drop your head down to your chest and then round your shoulders. Okay, let's all do that. Okay, just okay. I'm so serious. say that Dro again. Drop your head down to your chin on your probably not good to do too much if you're driving. But okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. and just round your shoulders down. Okay. Now just reverse that. Just do the opposite. Put your head up. Head up. On you Shoulder, can shoulders back, back and the head goes out. up and the head goes up and the change of the psychology is you can feel it you can absolutely feel it's just by changing the posture in French we use the word attitude for body position mm. in English we use the word attitude for a mental position oh interesting and then, so you got attitude and attitude so if I say to somebody uh, you've got a bad attitude in, in, in the English language uh, that means that they're mental constructs somehow they, they're not uh, very agreeable with the way you're not perceiving them as being very agreeable somehow in French when we say attitude we're attitude we're saying your body position and I love that connection because again it's this body mind you shift the body if you're feeling depressed, literally open up the chest, put your head back, and m move out, especially if you can move it outdoors in that p particular case. You can feel your body, your mind shifting just right. by physically. Well, physical. you're breathing, and again, focusing on your breathing while you're doing that. And again, think about somebody who's depressed. What do they look like? You know, I talk about this example of being in Chicago and walking down a dark street at night and how if you're scared, you tend to shrug, a, shrug in, right? Uh, hide, away, hide away, hide, hide away. You're trying away, to hide. You're trying right? to, be, to become invisible. Trying to become invisible, which, of course, makes you more, look much more like a victim, and you're much more likely to get attacked. Whereas if you did exactly the opposite, you're like, hey, look at me, you know, and you have your shoulders back, and I'm in control, and I have some power and some oomph to my step, nobody messes with you. And it's the same with if you're depressed, you do exactly what Ken said. You hunch your shoulders over, your head's down, your breathing is limited, right? And so simply doing the physical shift. And it's right? easy. See, that, and that's easy describe to it, do. Can you describe that physical, what you're doing differently? Well, at that point in time, what you're doing is you're actually reinforcing a mental construct so that you've held depression of the mind, right? There's yes. some depression and depressed, even the word we use, depressed, Ooh, right? Yeah. You know, depressed, it means coming down, it's w w pulling into the, s into the body, like kind of retreating. Mm. So you're depressed, right? And then all of a sudden you get accelerated, right? Oh, and you start yeah. to move out from that position. Very easy for me and you right now that for no matter what you're doing, to move your body into that position. You just do it. Body moves. Okay, Mind so, body, shifts. so tell us again what to do. Lifting Be up, the, basically not compressing the chest, but opening the chest. Opening the chest, right? okay. That allows the diaphragm to start moving more freely. Okay, breathing so you breathe from your diaphragm. Right, deep breathe. Instead of from your top of your chest, right? right. Because if you breathe up in the top end, 
there's not very much air exchange. It's just the carbon dioxide uh, goes, there's a little bit of transfer, breathe deeper than the oxygen and the carbon dioxide have a lot more movement. It can get out of the body. So just a little shift of the chest, opening up the head, opening up the passageway so you can breathe out. Breathing through the nose, always more preferable than through the mouth, just because the nose, uh, if you do breathe through the nose, you get the parasympathetic nervous system. It gets activated, and it keeps you calmer uh, and more collected. So breathe again, through the, the sympathetic mouth nervous system is, is the fight-or-flight response. Fight-or-flight response. And Amygdala is triggered, fight-or-flight. Right. Whereas the parasympathetic is where you're calming things down. Right, the stay-and-play response as stay opposed and, to the fight. Stay-and-play. And oh, I love that. Yeah. So, and, and it's just literally you can move, you can activate the system but by doing nose breathing or mouth breathing. The activate either system. So, by the way, let me interrupt you for one second. We're, you're listening to KRUU 100.1 on your FM dial. Today, we're on Mental Health Matters. We're talking about the big four. I'm not sure if we're going to get to all of them today or we're going to do that next week. But um, we're right now, we're talking about taking back control over our lives. Right. How else would you say it, Ken Well, and Danielle? Uh, yeah. Danielle, do you? Uh, yeah, sure. It's, it's how can I best create my foundation to expand my limitations on as a human. And so we're talking about breathing and body position, right? But so you breathe but the breathing is just breathe naturally and innocently, but breathe deeply. But as soon as if you got your chest com- compressed and depressed, right. then you yeah. can't breathe. Just mm-hmm. opening up the chest, you breathe deeper automatically. Mm-hmm. So you do a little modification on the physical level and along for the ride comes the mind and the mind starts to get a little bit more alert a little bit more expansive a little less depressed on we go yes and and it's it really is true again if you're depressed again you're hunched over your shoulders are back your head is down a little bit right but you're also tend to hyperventilate you tend to breathe from the top of your lungs as opposed to breathing deeply and so, so we often think that you know, we're depressed or we're anxious or whatever is out of our control, and it's not. Even the biochemistry, which we can shift through exercise, uh, transcendence, meditation, diet, sleep, all those kind of things, we could change the brain chemistry. It's not always take the magic pill. There's lots of ways to do that, but it's But what's also powerful about doing those kind of things is it's you taking control of your life, not just taking the pill to take control of your life. If you need the pill, take the pill. Oh, absolutely. But do something for you to take control. And one of the concepts here that's important is that stop hunting for that Ma- the silver bullet. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right? The silver bullet's going to pierce the heart. What you're hunting for is the silver buckshot. You know, it's a bunch of things that you're hunting for because the, in each one, if there's a bunch of little things you can do, then they add up. They become much more powerful. And with a single bullet, you've kind of either miss or you get it. With buckshot, you can just get in the general area and you're going to have some effect on stuff. So it's, I think that people are trying to find uh, again, a magic solution, a small little thing that's got to get just to a very exact par- target. Now let's get big, big back, pull back, or sorry, pull back and, and get the big picture of our lives. Yeah, versus uh, attempting to sprint up the mountain and being worn out. You're climbing continuously up the mountain and fully integrating these small habits into your life that make a huge difference where you reach your goal and I- you're actually embodying what you've sought out to do versus wearing yourself out or going to extremes. Right. When you get to the top of the hill, you're ready to enjoy the view and not be in an, ex- in an exhausted state because you're working within your own ability. But you know, that power, again, is that, that is that buckshot. The first part about it is pulling the trigger and doing something. Mm-hmm. Not doing just something. Anything. And if it doesn't work, you know, once the ship's moving, it's, it's easier to turn it. If the ship isn't moving, you, you can't there's turn no anything. There's mm-hmm. no, there's no, there is no Get momentum. in action. Do something to make a difference today. Now, and, and, uh, and what are you going to do? Well, let's talk about our big four because... The, there are four things that are the silver buckshot, in my opinion. I, I have no doubt about this at all. The first and f- most fundamental 
is sleep. People are not getting adequate, deep rest. And that has massive effects on the psychophysiology. Uh, so we've got to get people back sleeping properly, sleeping long and, and deep. Uh, and the, our the society- key is not just get the hours, get the depth of sleep with the time of sleep. And again, to be more concrete, that's seven and a half to nine hours. If you're sleeping more than nine hours, especially more than 10 hours, you've got another problem and it's not you're causing just as much problems. Right. And if you're getting less than seven hours at night, you're in deep doo-doo. Right, right. Now, you can, listen, I've got people that come to me and say, listen, uh, I'm trying to, I want to train myself to be able to get down to four hours a night of sleep. With oh, a, God. And, and listen, you can do it. You can break it down. And after a while, your normality starts, you start to think, yes, I'm normal. But it's a very distorted form of normality that you can create. So, we, you know, where do you going to be? It's a range. There's a lot of variation between individuals. But like you said, someplace between seven and nine hours, eight hours and 20 minutes, the research kind of is, is kind of one of the magic numbers, eight hours, 20 minutes. But there's a variation around that. But it's got to be quality. part of that also depends on when I'm going to sleep and when I am entering into a deep cycle. And, so not, and not because the cycle is generally about an hour and a half. That's right. And so that's how come these time numbers differ for different people. But clearly, there is a tiny, tiny, and I mean really tiny percentage of the population that can live less than seven, seven and a half hours of sleep and be okay. But it is very mis. And if you think that you're one of them, you're probably not. You're probably not because, and and in North America right now, likely a third of the population are sleep deficit. Mm. Uh, they're just they are, uh, and w- and how do you do that? Well, it's not through getting a g- one good night's sleep. It's b- very gradually building yourself back up to your normal time. Because with sleep, you've got see the circadian rhythm by definition, is more than 24 hours. So every night you're resetting it just slightly. Oh, yeah. You've got to, yeah, it's, it's, you've got to keep resetting it every night because it's really easy to slip it the wrong way. So you've got to keep resetting it. So that's why when you, a, a symptom of actually correct amount of sleep is that when you go to bed, you do not fall asleep immediately. If you fall asleep within five minutes of getting in bed, you're, that's a symptom of incorrect amount of sleep, that you're sleep deficit. Yeah, because you're fatigued is the reason. It's just like when you drink and you go to sleep. You might go to sleep faster, but there's lack of depth of sleep, and you're also going to sleep dehydrated, and you're going to sleep with um, the, this toxin in your brain, literally right. a toxin to your brain. It's not that, again, be black or white and don't ever drink. No, if drinking works for you to have one drink, okay, fine. But if you're drinking at night, it's problematic because... Because it comes back to the Buddhist concept of moderation in all things, the middle way. Mm. You know, there's no... there's no black and white, as you were saying earlier. You know, th- it's not the bad, good. That's too... It, it doesn't work that way. Mm, mm, yeah, like, exactly. It, that all or nothing thinking. No, it's, it's, that's not where it's at. So what we do is we tweak a little bit in the middle. So and, and for some people, th- yes, you do need to be... You know, I am predisposed to being an alcoholic or something, or it's really toxic for me, or I'm trying to evolve in a certain way. Then yes, then don't drink. Of course don't drink. If, but you know, that doesn't extend to everything, by the way. That doesn't mean open no. season to go, no. well, if I could have a beer for you, no, if it doesn't work for you, then don't do it. And that doesn't mean open season and go to whatever drug you want. Again, the whole point is growth here, right? In moderation and to create the world that works for you, right? So, with that sleep example, you know, it's going to, if it's, if you're between 10, likely more like 15 minutes when you fall asleep, it takes a little while just to settle down, then that's likely a symptom of correct sleep. So sleep is a, is a, is a fundamental, I think it's the fundamental. It actually. is. It, it is. And everything that I do in therapy, if, if I can't get somebody to have a s- sleep, if they've got a sleep disorder, that is the primary thing. I know I'm supposed to be working on psychological issues or couple issues or on this, but you know, we just had a, a couple that came in a while ago. They they drove a long way to come see us to do a couples retreat 
kind of thing that I do here in town and where I could spend extensive amount of time with one couple to really make some dramatic differences. And the problem is, is when both of them had a sleep disorder and were terribly, terribly out of sync and it was destroying their lives, their brains weren't working clear enough to actually enter into their relationship issues. So yes, they're coming for couples counseling, but I can't do couples counseling until I get their brains to work. Right. It's sort of like if somebody's an alcoholic, Alcohol is a symptom of a problem. It's not the problem, but if I don't get the drinking to stop and to stop harming oneself, I can't get to the why that drinking's there to begin with. And so sleep is absolutely essential, fundamental. And after you get the sleep thing ironed out, shall we say, where do you go? Nutrition. We've got to make sure that's the second leg of this of this of the big yeah, four. Yeah, and I, I think we're gonna we're gonna have to have another show on the other four more in depth. Yeah, because we're down to our last few minutes here. Okay, but why don't you mention what the other ones well, are? Well, it's so we got nutrition. Then after that, meaningful nutrition activity. Nutrition means really everything I'm taking into my body, right? Ingestion. Ingestion. So it means, am I drinking enough water? Am I having the proper uh, fiber and lean protein throughout the day? Am I taking the proper supplements? Am I getting all my nutrition? Do I, Am I under this delusion that just because I think I'm eating correctly, I, I am? Because even the soil's been so depleted. Sure by what we're doing that we're not getting all our nutrition just from our food for most of us for some maybe but it's again everybody's individual right again we're not here to make you know it's what works for you so we nutrition is the next one the next one is meaningful activity in our lives we've got to make sure that we have we're doing things that when we get up in the morning we have a sense of purpose that yes absolutely drives us that gets us out of bed and I always what, love pulling in Viktor Frankl to everything I do. So uh-huh. yes, and the uh, another component of physical is uh, getting exercise, moving the body. If yeah. you don't move the body, we well, we talked earlier on the show about but it. But it's not just moving the body; it's also connection to that body. Mm-hmm. And moving the body, you know, I, I was going through something yesterday of purification. Let's say. Moving the body meant doing a little yoga, doing a little bit of stretching, doing a little bit of walking. It wasn't moving. It wasn't moving the body always has to mean go to the gym and lift weights. I did the day before, actually. You know, it's like, what is it that works for your body today? And part of that thing when we're talking about this notion of time, right, Mm -hmm. of, you know, we always compare ourselves to who we were. Well, I used to be in this kind of shape years ago, so I should be this today. No, it's who I am literally today. Right. And yes, I could have some vision of who I want to create myself to be in the future so that I could bring it back to today. I want to get to there from here to there. Sure. But so anyways, Ken, you, you finish and, up. And the, and the last one we just want of the big four is transcendence. And transcendence is a continuum. I... Uh, t- Transcendence means to go beyond. And so it can have to do with meditation, of course. But it also means the greater meaning. Is there some greater... Do you feel that you've got greater purpose in this life? So it doesn't always have to be some cosmic thing if I don't relate to that. Or maybe I am relating to that because I'm thinking I'm, I'm transcending. I have this great cosmic purpose. But it also means grounding a little bit and doing something with that cosmic purpose. Right. right? Uh, just if, literally finding something that's meaningful. It could, it could be a hobby even. Transcendence can, it can, it's sense of getting beyond the self, beyond your limitations. Or making a difference in the lives of others, uh, which always makes a difference for yourself. Volunteering. Wonderful, wonderful place to start and an easy place to start for change. Thank you so much. Danielle, last word. No, thank you guys for listening today, and thank you, Ken, for coming on the show. All Bye. right. Bye, everyone. We'll see you next week. Next week. Next week. Next week.